Hey moms, I've been a personal trainer for years and these are the five easy to implement things you can do in your life that's gonna help you finally lose that weight and still be a good mom. And the first one is not prioritizing protein. And for some people, they actually reduce their protein intake. Why? People associate protein with muscle, which is true, yes. But they also associate it one step further. Protein, muscle, bodybuilder, huge, bulky. I don't want to get bulky, and I bet you don't want to either, and I don't blame you. Who wants to be uncomfortably huge? right? Very few people, okay? So you take protein out of your life thinking this will prevent me from getting bulky. Well, actually, protein does a really good job. And this is the first thing I recommend to people when they're trying to lose weight is actually increase your protein consumption. If you were eating, you know, one chicken breast a day, let's have two, right? Let's add a little bit. You don't have to double it. Let's add a little bit to it. Why? It, protein does a really good job of making you feel full right? Protein too, especially leaner proteins. I'm not talking, you know, ribeye steaks. I'm talking chicken breast. I'm talking 93.7 hamburger, right? Sirloin steak, shrimp. I'm talking things that are lean, are considered lean. Oftentimes, four ounces of salmon, even though there's fat in there, will make you more full than the same amount of calories of some TV dinner or some, you know, hamburger helper or, or pasta or whatever. And same calories, all of a sudden you're eating more because that pasta didn't make you feel full because it didn't have the protein, okay? Plus, protein requires a lot of energy to actually burn, okay? It can, it can have a great thermogenic effect. And because you don't want to get bulky, I would assume the word you would use for your goal is toned. If you don't have tone showing right now, that means we need to change your musculature, right? Not necessarily make it bigger, but you will get a little bit of muscle. But we also need to take away body fat, okay? We're not going to be able to do that without a lot of protein. The scary, mass, monster, bulky, crazy guys on stage, they eat crazy amounts of protein when they're cutting as much of their body fat as they possibly can because it helps maintain their muscle. Well, you're not going to be huge at the end of this, but our goal is to maintain muscle and lose body fat if you want to get toned, okay? So we do need to increase that protein. Now, going along with the protein tip is not having meat in your fridge thawed or even meat in your freezer you could take out. So if you don't have meat, for a lot of people, that then you have no meal, okay? A lot of people don't just eat vegetables and fruits and, and pastas and just say, yep, I'm good. They like a meal with some form of meat in it. Well, if you don't have meat, most people, their first thought is, hey, we're having Domino's tonight, right? Now, if you're eating Domino's all the time because you just don't have meat in the house, that's extra calories. That's you getting bulky. In fact, a lot of bodybuilders that end up getting really, really big, they have times in their career, in their year, where they're eating anything and everything in sight because it doesn't matter. I'm trying to get big. That's their mentality. Well, if it doesn't matter, I'm just going to buy Domino's. It is the same mentality of I'm going to get big. Okay. So here's a tip to make sure you have protein in your house. I make mistakes all the time. So number one tip is putting some in your freezer that are really easy when frozen to still heat them up and it still tastes good. Okay. I like steak. My wife, she likes chicken. So we have some steak that's really easy. It actually is shredded steak that are in little patties. And my wife, she, like I said, likes chicken. So we actually get, it's Kevin's brand. You may have seen it around. They, you know, have chicken frozen marinating in something. It's already preheated or pre-cooked. So all you have to do is heat it up and it'll be fine. And then you can have it with a side of rice or, or whatever you're doing. But if you don't have it in the freezer, again, another tip is set out whatever pots and pans, whatever implements you're going to need to make dinner, set those out, okay, so that they're already ready. 
because it's going to do two things for you. Number one, it's going to remind you, hey, check the fridge. Is there any meat in there? If not, now you're making a mental note. I need to stop at the grocery store on the way home and pick up chicken, pick up beef, whatever. So that's already better than, well, I already assume we don't have anything, so it's Domino's tonight. Okay, so, you know, we're going to pick up Domino's on the way home or pick up chicken on the way home instead of pre-made, ready-to-eat pizza. You could get pre-made, ready-to-eat rotisserie chicken. You're making a stop anyway. That way, no meat in the fridge, no problem. Check the freezer. No meat in the freezer, no problem. Mental note, going to the grocery store on the way home. Great. Now you've already combated the, ah, screw it mentality, right? So that's two. The third one is carelessly tracking. So let me bring you back to the bulky bodybuilder for a second. When they want to get bigger, they don't track what they're eating. They don't care what they're eating typically. And if you have that same idea, guess what's going to happen? The reason they don't care is because they know just not tracking, you're naturally going to eat more. Because here's a great thing that happens when you're tracking. You kind of hone in your eye a little bit. What do I mean by that? I made a terrible mistake over the last couple of months, because I haven't been tracking my food either, of how much orange juice I could perceive that I was drinking from the carton, trying to save dishes, how much orange juice I'm drinking from the carton at a time versus how much I thought I was drinking. Okay, I started actually measuring my orange juice in a pitcher, and boy, what I thought was four ounces of orange juice, because I drink orange juice before and after a workout, so I like to split that up, was more like seven, eight. I was probably drinking twice as much orange juice as I thought just because I wasn't even, I was just drinking. Yeah, that's four. No, that's seven. That's six. That I drank the four ounces out of the cup and I was like, that's it? Yikes. Okay, but again, so tracking can really help pull you in. Now, I'm not saying you have to track all the time, but I do want you to track long enough that you can look at a chicken breast and say, yeah, that's roughly four. You throw it on the scale and it says 4.1. Yeah, good, great. You're in a good place to stop tracking. And when you're tracking, it'll give you an idea of where your calories are. If you realize, holy cow, I thought I was only eating 1,600 calories. No wonder I can't lose weight. I'm eating 2,100, right? Now, not tracking is one thing. And carelessly tracking is something else. So let's, you just thought, okay, I should start tracking. I need you to be really specific with your tracking. If you're making a shake and you have a protein powder, great. And you look at the label and on the front of the label, it says 24 grams of protein. Great. So you write down 24 grams. You don't actually turn it over and look how many grams of fat, how many grams of carbs, how many grams of protein. You will get burned if you don't do that. Now, carelessly, ah, 24 grams of protein, but mindfully, oh, there's one gram of fat, three grams of carbs that I didn't know. Now, in all reality, that extra 25, not even, 20 calories doesn't really make a hill of beans of difference. But what it does do, if you carelessly track, is it opens up your mind to, well, that little square of chocolate that I ate, it, I'm not even going to write it down it doesn't even matter. It's not that many calories. Then it turns into two or a small Snickers bar. or Eventually, you fall off completely tracking, and now you're eating 2,100 calories when you wanted to only eat 16, okay? That's all it takes. It's a very slippery slope. You give yourself an inch, and you will take a mile because I'm tired, and I'm not going to write it down. You can use an app. I like pen and paper, okay? Now, again, you don't have to track all the time, but when people are trying to lose weight, you need to weigh it, you need to track it to make sure that when you think you're eating that many calories, you are, and you're not over indulging too much or under, okay? Once you get to the point where, hey, you've lost some weight, awesome. Now you have the resources to decide, am I gonna continue to lose weight? Am I going to maintain? Or maybe I get lost too much weight and I wanna gain some weight. Our next tip is always thinking lose. You have a loser's mentality. Hey, I lost 15 pounds, I want to lose 20. I lost 20, I now want to lose 25 total. Constantly trying to push the envelope, lose more, lose more, lose more. At some point, you're going to turn into Great Aunt Ruth. What do I mean? 
her name may not be Ruth, but picture this person in your family because you have one and maybe you're that person. Great Aunt Ruth. Hey, did you see Ruth lately? Man, she's lost 60 pounds. She looks great. You see her? It's shocking how big of a difference. Holy crap. Ruth, you look amazing. Okay. Three months go by. You see Ruth again. Not as dramatic. She still looks good. You look at her. Wow, great. Great Aunt Ruth. She did a great job losing weight. Good for her. Right? Another three months, maybe six months, because maybe now it's the holidays. Huh. Aunt Ruth, you look different. You look bigger. You don't look nearly as shocking as I remember. Eh, maybe it's just me. Next six months go by. You see her? Ruth is now bigger. Why? She got stuck in a losing, 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 losing mindset. Now, in Great Aunt Ruth's mind, she lost 60. You thought it was great. She thought, ah, if only I could lose 10 more pounds. I've lost 60 so far, so I'm going to keep trying. And what happened was she continued to cut her calories, continued to increase her activity, all these things that help. She just continued to double down. And it actually will bring us to our fifth tip, but I'm going to continue the story. She just kept trying to bring it down, bring it down, bring it down in her food, in bringing up her activity. And all of a sudden, she got extremely hungry, stopped tracking, said, fuck it. And started eating like that person who wanted to bulk, the person you're trying to avoid. Okay? So instead of trying to be like Great Aunt Ruth where she had this dramatic change, what needs to happen is we go down, we maintain, we stop tracking, we gain a little bit of weight. That's totally fine. We get re-motivated to start tracking again. We drop some more weight. Then we get sick of tracking. Good. Fall off the bandwagon a little bit, gain a little bit, drop, gain a little bit, drop gain a little bit drop and you will continue to implement these these tactics and strategies in your life that you can maintain what i like to do with my clients is okay you've lost 12 pounds let's take three months and just chill let's see if at the end of these three months we can be total loss of nine or ten pounds so i'm literally saying you can gain three pounds over the next three months you can't blow it but let's just you know maintain it a little bit great then all of a sudden the end of those three months, let's say it's summer. How do you feel you look? You might decide, wow, losing 10 pounds. I feel great. I look great. I get to, you know, enjoy some alcohol once in a while. I get to X, Y, Z. I'm feeling good right here. Great. Uh, you know, I, I think it's time I need to clean it up again. I need to start tracking again because why? You would like to lose a few more pounds, but you maintained it roughly for three months. Great. Let's spend another two, three months, lose another 12 or 15 pounds. Then give ourselves two to three months and let's kind of hover. Great. Now in total, you've lost 20 pounds. I really feel good. Or I need to change. Great. You're not like great aunt Ruth who just had this huge drop off, never having a, a place to grab onto so she could maintain it. What happened? Just like what's happened to you in the past. You lost it for a while and you regained more and then you felt defeated and you felt like you're losing time, a waste of time, whatever. Let's not be like Great Aunt Ruth. And again, bringing us to the fifth tip, I kind of gave it away already. It's prioritizing exercise, cardio over solid resistance training. Okay, what do I mean by that? So you're trying to avoid getting bulky. You think if I eat too much, I'll get bulky. If I eat too, many pro too much protein, I'll get bulky. If I do resistance training, I will get bulky. So you decide, I'm going to do cardio. Now, the funny thing about cardio is, let's say you spend 45 minutes doing cardio today. You weigh yourself today, you weigh yourself tomorrow. It'll be different, okay? You lose weight, you lose water. Maybe you do it again, you lose a little more. Maybe you do it again, you lose a little more. At some point though, all the water's gone. And you know, you start to get a little hungry. Okay, great. And all of a sudden, you start to go back up in weight. So what do you do? Hey. It was working for me before when I was doing 45 minutes of cardio five days a week. Let's do six. Great. You start losing water again. <sighs> Great. I've lost more weight. This is working for me. Then all of a sudden it's six days a week for an hour because you plateaued. Now you want to lose a little bit more and lose a little bit more. All of a sudden it's six months down the road. Great Aunt Ruth. You put in three hours a day of cardio and you've lost all this weight but barely and you still have 40 pounds you want to lose. 
now what, four hours, five hours? Are you going to be there all day? No, you're going to rebound. You're going to give up because you're just not there. And three hours every day, that is so much work. And I applaud you for being able to mentally do that. But let's think of it this way. Put the cardio to the side. Let's say you only have 45 minutes. Great. You could do jogging on a treadmill, walking uphill on a treadmill. Maybe you're watching one of the muted TVs at your gym. Maybe you have a book in front of you, which if it's a book and you're reading it, how hard are you actually working? Right? So you can think of it like that. Boring. Very hard to keep doing. Keep going. Or we could think of it this way. Let's do 10 bodyweight squats, sitting to a chair, standing up, or a leg press. Great. You pick one. I don't care which. It's a leg exercise. 10 of them. And when you get to 10, you're thinking to yourself, man, I'm so glad I don't have to do 12, right? If you do 10 and you say, that was easy, you might as well be on the treadmill. Let's step up the intensity, add a little weight, make it a little harder, okay? Challenge your body. Go from that leg exercise, right, into push-ups, into uh, chest press, dumbbell chest press, whatever. Do that 12 times, okay? Again, same deal. 12 is hard, probably couldn't do 15. Great. Now take a minute break. Go back to the leg press and then do your chest. Go back to the squat, do your chest. Go back and forth four times. Great. You've spent eight-ish minutes doing leg press or squats or whatever and some type of a chest exercise. Awesome. You move on. Now you're going to do an RDL, a seated leg curl, a leg curl on a stability ball, whatever. It's going to be really hard for you to do 12. Let's say 12. Then either a row machine, a TRX, some exercise that you are pulling toward you, cable, rows, whatever. Let's do that 10 times. So you're doing 12 hamstrings, 10 rows, back and back and back. Maybe there's 30 seconds in between each exercise. After your rows, maybe you take a minute. So again, it takes you two, two and a half minutes to do an entire round. Great. Do that four times. Awesome. That's been another 10 minutes. Cool. We're 18 minutes in. Now, let's do walking lunges. It's going to pick your heart rate up a little bit. Awesome. At the end of doing walking lunges, we're going to do overhead press. Okay? We're going to do dumbbells, you know, uh, 12 of them. So you're going to do 10 lunges per leg, 12 overhead presses. You're going to do that four times. In between lunges, you may, not, you may need more rest. After the shoulder presses, you might be feeling a little bit more tired. Great. Do that four times. We've dedicated roughly a half hour, because maybe 40 minutes, because you're going to warm up a little bit, maybe chit-chat with somebody, maybe in between you lose track of the time, you go to the bathroom, you have to fill your water bottle, whatever. So let's say 40 minutes. Now, how do you think that workout felt? Challenging. You got your blood pumping. You felt the muscles that you're thinking to yourself, I really want my shoulders to be toned. I want my abs to be toned, my butt to be toned. I want X, Y, Z. And you're going to feel it in that workout versus doing the treadmill where all you feel it is in your legs a little bit and you're like this is so boring I don't know if I can do this for another six months right the resistance training it's fun you do it on a Monday you come back and do something similar on a Thursday and then you come back hey my kids are home from school it's Saturday they can stay home while I go to the gym for an hour maybe there's kids club whatever and you do that three times a week and you're extremely excited to do it well now you're gonna stick with your plan way longer right? When you eat better, your workouts are going to feel better. You're going to feel those muscles. You might even be a little sore after your workout, which is fine. You don't have to be sore all the time, but getting sore is a, is a good sign. And all of a sudden it's going to be three months. You've lost 10 pounds, but you've lost a ton of inches because what people think muscle is, is bulky, but truly what muscle is, is it's something that takes up a lot less space than its fat counterpart. A pound of muscle versus a pound of fat is a huge difference, right? On the scale, it's only one pound. But if a pound of fat, you know, let's say a pound of muscle is the size of my fist, a pound of fat is much larger, right? And if we start making ourselves lose some body fat and making ourselves gain muscle, all of a sudden we're going to take up a lot less space. We're going to finally have that defined collarbone line we want. Our mommy belly is going to be gone. We're going to have all this energy because we didn't kill ourselves on cardio to run after those crazy kids. And it set you up so you're not like great aunt Ruth and you're able to keep it off.